Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day, Prof. Nenden. Good day, Pak Fazri, and hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mugid Rifai, and today I will be presenting about good language learners and what they do. This is a chapter report from a book entitled Lessons from Good Language Learners. Before I begin the presentation, I'd like to introduce the chapter first. The chapter is, into, is entitled Strategies and Good Language Learners written by Carol Griffiths and the book is entitled Lessons from Good Language Learners uh, edited by Carol Griffiths published in 2008 by Cambridge University Press. This chapter uh, consists of two main topics. The first one is defining and classifying strategies and the other one is how, good, how do good language learners use language learning strategies. And under the second topic, there are four subtopics. The first one is the study, and then the second one is the implications for the teaching or learning situation, and then the third one is questions for ongoing research, and the last one is conclusion. Now, this presentation is going to be divided into four sections. The first section is going to talk about what experts say about good language learners. And then in the next part, the second part, uh, I will be talking about the strategy items found to be employed by the good language learners according to the study uh, conducted by Carol Griffiths. And then the next one is going to be the implications for the teaching or learning situation based on the findings from the study. And lastly, the fourth part will be about the conclusion. Now let's go on to the first part, the good language learners. Who are good language learners? Although there has never been a clear identification of who good language learners are, several experts have argued about this. The first one, Ruben and Thompson in 1994, uh, they argued that there is no stereotype of good language learners. However, they realized that there are techniques or uh, ways uh, language learners used in reaching the positive outcomes. And then next, in 2010, Thompson argued that the concept of good language learners always changes according to expected outcomes from the learners. Take for example, in during the grammar translation method, the accuracy is uh, the emphasis of the method. Like what uh, Richard said, uh, that during the grammar translation method, uh, accuracy is the emphasis. Therefore, making errors is avoidable. Good language learners should not make errors. However, as teaching methods progress, making errors is not considered to be uh, bad at all. Now, making errors is considered to be one of the strategy, one of the strategies used by language learners in reaching their uh, positive outcomes. Um, Later, in 2015, the last one, Griffiths and Kansas agreed that good language learners have the ability to integrate all strategies in order to get positive results. They argued that uh, strategies are not independent. They are dependent to the learners. So, what makes them useful is the learner. And therefore, from these three uh, arguments, I can conclude that good language learners are, uh, are, are people who has the ability to come up with techniques or uh, tools and devise them in such a way that uh, help their learning uh, to get positive outcomes. Now, so what do good language learners do? What strategies they uh, apply in uh, learning languages? A study conducted by Carol Griffiths to um, 
international students in uh, language schools in New Zealand, in Auckland, New Zealand, found out that the more successful language learners, they use 15 most frequently used strategies. Um, they are grouped into five categories, which are managing own learning, improving grammar, integrating skills, expanding vocabulary, and using resources. The first one, managing own learning, this is also known as metacognitive, metacognitive skills. Uh, it was found out that good language learners, they do homework. Uh, they study in target language environment where they can use the target language uh, intensively and then they also uh, take notes. In addition to that, they also learn from their mistakes. They do self-evaluation and they invest a lot of time in studying. And then um, the next one, in expanding vocabulary, they uh, realize that learning new vocabulary is useful, especially in uh, building more successful communication. And then in improving grammar, although the, the approach of the language teaching is now uh, shifted from grammar translation into communicative approach, it seems that studying grammar is still uh, one of the most frequently used strategies by good language learners. And next, using resources. The resources meant here uh, are not only uh, things but also include humans. So good language learners, they use the teacher as a resource. They also use the dictionary as a reference and they watch TV in English and they watch movies in English. So they uh, find as many resources they, as they can to uh, get them exposed in the target language. And then the last one, integrating skills, two of which are social skills, uh, which are talking to other students in English and talking to a native speaker English. In this uh, group, uh, good language learners, they try to integrate all language skills, including uh, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. If you see here, other than talking to uh, other people in English, they also listen to native speakers talking, and they also listen to songs in English. The findings uh, has also been confirmed with what uh, what was found in O'Malley in 1985. We can see here there are uh, six strategy, strategy items and their corresponding strategy items from O'Malley in 1985. The first one, uh, learning in native speaking environment with 3.5 average of frequency in Griffiths 2008 and contextualization with the percentage of 7.4 in O'Malley 1985. The next one talking to other students in English in Griffiths and cooperation in O'Malley. Consciously learning new vocabulary and vocabulary learning in O'Malley. Keeping a language learning notebook and note taking. Talking to native speakers of English, social communication, learning from mistakes, self-evaluation. So we can conclude that these, um, these strategies are commonly used by good language learners. Now, so what are the implications for either the teaching or learning situation? First, we need to consider that um, taking actions based on the findings is not always straightforward. What uh, is in reality is sometimes not as what we expect. So let's have a look at the classroom activities first. For classroom activities, we need to consider the effectiveness of the use of particular activities in facilitating learning for the learners. Take for example, the use of game. According to Griffith's study, 
the use of game uh, doesn't show uh, high frequency both in uh, low learners or uh, high learners, high level students. So when we uh, try to, con to conduct or tr we try to have games in our uh, classroom activities, we need to consider the effectiveness of the game itself in uh, reaching the goal. And then the learning materials. We need to consider individual differences, especially with the level of difficulty that might discourage learning. For example, in the study, we can see that uh, reading newspaper is used frequently by uh, high-level uh, learners. However, uh, although uh, reading newspaper can be useful, can be used can be a useful strategy in uh, improving students uh, fluency in English. Newspaper language is sometimes difficult to understand, especially for those who uh, are new to a language. So instead of uh, taking action based on the finding, we need to consider uh, the action very carefully. And then Next, teacher's role. As we can see from the finding that uh, students or learners use the teacher as uh, the resource, so uh, teachers should position themselves as role models and also the, the alternative source of information. Uh, I mention alternative source here because uh, nowadays students have uh, at least various sources. Uh, either online or offline. And so for the overall, when we take actions from the implication of the findings, we need to be careful. We need to consider a lot of things because uh, sometimes the reality is uh, not uh, as what we expect. Okay, now we have come to the last part, which is the conclusion. From the discussion, we can conclude that good language learners apply particular techniques and make use of them very well in order to get positive outcomes. And then, uh, several studies about good language learners uh, have been conducted to find out teachable skills performed by good language learners in an attempt to provide poor learners with the same skills in order to help them enhance their learning. This is in line with what uh, has been expected by uh, Rubin in 1975 that the research about good language learners is aimed to find out techniques or strategies that can be transferred to poor learners and therefore help them increase their language ability. And then learners are the one who is responsible for the outcomes from their learning. Despite the presence of strategies in their learning, it is the learner them it is the learners themselves that uh, are responsible for the outcomes of their learning. And then last one, although research findings are reliable, the reality is not quite straightforward. So we need to be careful when taking actions. We need to consider many things, uh, especially the uh, individual differences that occur uh, among learners and that is the end of my presentation thank you very much for your attention and I welcome questions from you guys and I would uh, love to answer the questions thank you very much Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh